Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So I have a couple of major updates in regard to the fake candidate out of Florida. So if you've been following the show, you know that there were three candidates who ran what appears to be, well, one we know for sure, but the other two appear to be bogus campaigns in Florida. And this was to try to siphon votes away from the Democrats running in each of their districts. Um, you also would know, if you've been watching the show, that former Republican lawmaker Frank Artiles was arrested and charged with felony crimes for paying one of those fake candidates, a man named Alex Rodriguez. Well, as I recently shared, Artiles had asked the judge to keep all of his communications secret. He wanted to keep his phone records and emails and other documents secret and keep them away from news outlets that had requested copies of these documents. Um, and they were relevant to the case. So this was up for debate. But Artilas argued, or his attorney, I should say, argued that he wouldn't or may not receive a fair trial if these documents became public. It could taint the jury pool. I mean, which sounds pretty damning. It sounds like, wow, you know, this, these documents are pretty damning for my client, so <laughs> it wouldn't, wouldn't be good for him at trial. So the judge just handed down a decision. She actually agreed to release the majority of the documents immediately. So we could see some of them right away. Other documents will need to be redacted first because they want to conceal, I guess there's pictures of some minors in some of them. There's medical and bank information. Um, they want to redact phone numbers, email addresses, you know, typical things so that people don't get doxxed or they don't get attacked or whatever. Um, especially people who aren't involved in any way, shape, or form. So first, I'm going to share with you one important detail that we already discovered, something that just came out. And then I'm going to tell you what we may be able to find out in the very near future, which, depending on what's in these documents, but it could take down a Republican operative who has been operating in bad faith for many decades. So I'll explain that in a minute. But as you may recall, Artiles primarily paid Rodriguez directly for his part, for you know, playing the role of the so-called Democrat in this election fraud scheme. He literally handed him stacks of cash. He, they found a bunch of cash at his house, and that's how he paid him. Uh, he also was like making payments for his... Um, kids' schools, he was making payments for his, uh, not his mortgage, but his rent payment, things like that. However, Rodriguez told prosecutors that he also received $9,000 in cash from another man, but they never said who this other man was. Well, now we know. His name is Wade Scales, and he's apparently just a Facebook friend of Artila's. So for some reason, this scales guy went to his bank, pulled out 9000 bucks, and handed it over to Rodriguez on behalf of Artilas. Don't know why. I'm sure more details will come out. And needless to say, Scales has now lawyered up. And that's probably a good thing. Um, as have many others, apparently. There's other people, other entities uh, that are connected to Scales or to, uh, to Artilas. I mean... Um, according to the prosecutors, Artilas received payments from a number of different political organizations and various individuals over the course of this past election cycle. And prosecutors have reached out to each of them and discussed with them or tried to discuss, I guess, with some who haven't answered yet, what their relationship is with Artilas to determine if they have any part in all of this. So that leads me to what we might get a look at in the coming weeks. Evidently, Artilas has approximately 4,000 contacts listed on his cell phone. So I, for one, would love to see what investigative journalists can dig up on each of those almost 4,000 contacts. <laughs> I'd love to see who they are. In addition, prosecutors have copies of Artilas's emails, which 
that could be very revealing if he put anything in writing. And likely he did because this guy wasn't exactly the best at keeping a secret. This is the guy who went to a party on election night after one of these three you know, Republicans got elected after a, a fake candidate seemingly ran in his district. And he was bragging about it out in the open to people at this party. And here's the other thing. Here's what I alluded to in the beginning. We may get a look at contracts and invoices that are related to Artelis' consulting firm. And possibly, even more important, we may get to see documents related to this Republican tied firm from Gainesville, Georgia called Data Targeting Inc. So I've talked about this firm before. This is the firm that was also involved in a 2018 vote siphoning scheme in Georgia. And this is the same firm that was found guilty in a Republican gerrymandering case. So in 2013, the League of Women Voters filed a lawsuit over unfair redistricting practices that took place in 2012. They allege that, as always, Republican-controlled legislatures, which are responsible for drawing all the new district maps, they drew new district boundaries in a way that would benefit Republican candidates and undermine and unfairly target Democrat candidates. Surprise, surprise, this has gone on for ages and it's still going on right now. And the firm that literally drew those boundary maps for them, those unfair boundaries, was Data Targeting Inc. This case went all the way to the Florida Supreme Court because Data Targeting initially refused to turn over, well, I guess all along, they refused to turn over related documents in this case as the court had told them to do. So after the state Supreme Court forced them to turn these documents over, the court reviewed the documents and they issued a ruling because there was evidence of the founder colluding with the legislature to draw these maps, to jerry-rig these maps in a way that would favor Republicans. So the court issued a ruling after they looked through all of his documents and they said that the founder of data targeting basically colluded with, conspired with the legislature to, quote, produce individual districts and overall redistricting map favorable to the Republican Party and incumbents in violation of the Florida Constitution. You know, it's going to come as no shock to anyone that the Republican Senatorial Campaign Committee, the committee that's responsible for helping to elect Republicans in the state of Florida, that committee paid data targeting over $7 million in this past 2020 election cycle. So here's the deal. And here's a little more detail about this seemingly underhanded and potentially criminal firm data targeting. In a 2019 article that I found, Data Targeting's founder, this is a man named Patrick Bainter, he was referred to in that article as one of the most influential operatives in GOP politics. Now, according to the Dayton Beach News, which is where this article was written, the pa over the past 30 years, Bainter's company has worked on hundreds of Republican campaigns in more than a dozen states. And the article noted that more than 60 political action committees and groups, so PACs and groups close to Bainter, funneled money to boost candidates' chance, chances of winning. Basically, what they do is by using these groups and these PACs, they said that they, quote, created a mind-boggling maze of campaign funds that make it nearly impossible to trace the initial donor. So, gee, I wonder why they would want to hide and obfuscate the source of their funding. I mean, it's almost as if they have something to hide. That couldn't be. <laughs> I mean, the Republicans always act in good faith. They, they never try to hide anything that they do. <laughs> 
So they also said that he used, quote, questionable tactics to successfully elect Republican candidates. And they said this is at all levels of the United States government. This isn't just Congress or state houses or state state senates or things like that. So you also aren't going to be shocked to hear who some of his clients are. In Florida, his clients include Trump wannabes, go ahead, say it with me, Matt Gates and Ron DeSantis. I know, you guys are shocked. Um, so, you know, let's hope that this Boehner guy is finally taken down and put in prison where he belongs. He faced no charges in that 2013-2012 uh, gerrymandering case. And a reporter actually went up to him and asked him about his involvement in that crime. And he said, so what? That's a literal quote. He said, so what? You know, this is why the federal government, too, needs to step in and investigate this fake candidate case. Because these people and these groups have used these dirty tricks and these illegal tactics to place Republican allies in positions of power so that they don't face repercussions. And like I've said before, this is exactly why things like this are why they all fought so hard to keep Trump in office, why they were so willing to lie about the election and they continue to lie about the election. It has nothing to do with their love for Trump. Most of them don't even like him. It has always, always been about having an administration that's going to look the other way or possibly even help to further their own criminal activities. This is why Paxton in Texas is doing it and was doing it. It's why, you know, all these people, Gates, everybody, they know what dirty laundry they have. They don't give a damn about Trump. They wanted to keep him there because they know that it's a mutually beneficial relationship. He'll cover for them and they'll cover for him. I just hope they take this company down and these people. This has got to end. This guy has gotten away with all of these games, with these literally, you know, thumbing his nose at the law in a gerrymandering case and nothing happened. And then people wonder why they keep doing it. I can't imagine why. I mean, no consequences. So anyway, guys, as always, I will keep you posted on this story. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, share, subscribe, become a supporter or a friend of the show down below if you can. Thanks again. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.